Pareto charts are a different way of representing frequency distributions um, in order to help us understand particular kinds of effects and what's important. Uh, and that's really important, that's really vital to understand. This is all about understanding what's important in a situation. Can we rank this in some sort of way and make good decisions off the basis of it? So let me give you an example of this, okay? Suppose what you're looking at is just the sales numbers for a particular like shopping center or something like that based on what day of the week that it is, okay? So these are, um, you know, 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, all the way up to $10,000 sold in that day, it's not a massive uh, shop, but you know, it's making some okay money. And you can see that you've got this distribution based on what day it is, okay? Now hopefully you notice there are some obvious patterns here. For example, um, there are two days which sort of stand out among the rest, Saturday, Sunday, why do you think anyone wanna forward a theory? Why might the weekend attract more money? Sophie? The demographic. The demographic, so who's going there? Yeah. Okay, good. Okay, so not only uh, Monday to Friday, it's a school week, but it's also just, for most people, it's a working week, right? So people are at their day job, can't be at the shops spending money. Is that okay? Makes sense? Okay. There's another spike on there. What do you think that's about? Thursday. Thursday? Thursday late night shopping. Okay, so shops are open a bit longer, and they do that for this exact purpose, so that people can get there. Okay, get it. So here's what we're gonna do. Remember I said to you, a Pareto chart is about taking some data and working out what's important. Here's the first step. Um, I've got this other copy of this graph, which is slightly different as you can see. The first thing we're going to do is take this same data and instead of doing it in a chronological order, this is not the only order we could do it in, I want us to put the same data onto here, but we're going to rank it. We're going to rank it, right? So we're going to start from the left with the highest data point. So in this case it would be Saturday, um, which is up there at 8. Then we're going to do the next data point. So we're going to do it completely out of order. Um, there will be some that are the same and that's fine. Um, but we're looking for a sort of, you know, cascading graph here that shows which are the biggest days all the way down to the smallest days. Can I give you a minute, you can pick your pen back up now, to go ahead and put those onto the chart. Hopefully you can still read it, but is that okay for you, acceptable? You can continue doing it while I talk through this. Let me explain, now that we've done step one, place this same data set in descending order. Let me explain what we're gonna do next. Now I did mention this uh, set of axes is a bit different because weirdly, there's a second vertical axis. What's that guy doing there? And that's kind of the thing that makes a Pareto chart a Pareto chart. You've got the thousands of dollars of stuff sold, you still get days of the week here, but, whoop, there's our color. This other vertical axis is a new thing altogether. It's our cumulative frequency percentage. Cumulative frequency percentage. So the reason why I chose 1 to 10 is just to make this next bit a bit easier for us. I'm going to have a cumulative frequency sort of adding up all the way to 100%. That's the entire group of people. Okay. So this scale over here will be like 10%. 20%, 30%, all the way up to 100%, okay? So go ahead, label what this is, um, put a few of the things on there so you know what's, what this is about, 20, 30, 40, 50, that'll do for me, okay? Now, in order to actually put this next part of the data on, well, I need to know what the cumulative frequency is, and then I need to convert that into a percentage. So that takes a bit of thinking. To get a percentage, just like with the two-way tables, I need to know what any of these numbers are in comparison to the whole, which in this case is a week, okay? Now, you can see there's a day that's eight, and then seven, and then four. Can anyone go ahead and, in fact, not anyone, can you all go ahead and help me work out what is the total number of sales in thousands of dollars over the course of the entire week? Can you go ahead and you calculate it for me? Did you get it, Parent? What was it again? 25. 25. I got 26, but I'm probably wrong. Can we double check? Can we get some confirmation? Is it 25 or 26? 25. Oh, I'm wrong. Did you do Friday as a three? It's almost like I planned this. Okay, now, $25,000, okay? Now, what we're then going to do is take this, this figure, and we're going to use it as our denominator each time we work out the percentage, or I should say the cumulative frequency of each of these. So we'll just start it off step by step. Let's have a look at the first one. Okay, yeah? Is Tuesday a three or two? It's a two. And is Friday two or three? It's a two. It's a two. <laughs> yeah, it's meant to be. Sorry, it's not the most accurate. Okay. So let's work out 
our cumulative frequency percentage. Keep in mind we've reordered this, okay? The first one's the easiest. $8,000 sold on a Saturday, and I would compare that to the total sales. So that's 25,000, right? So if I say um, for Saturday, the cumulative frequency, just the first one is 8,000. So the cumulative frequency percentage will be 8,000 divided by the total sales over the whole week. What percentage is that? 32%. 32%. Okay, now because we've got this bar graph on here already, right? And I don't want to confuse what I'm about to draw onto here with the existing data. I'm going to take these figures and I'm going to draw them on a bit differently. So 32%, there's 10, there's 20, there's 30. So it's just above the three here. So 32% I'm going to mark with a big fat dot on the first column, because that's Saturday, the first data point. And then I continue. Now to work out cumulative frequency, do you remember, think back to our frequency distribution tables, you have this data point plus all the previous ones, right? So this data point is 7,000, and then you add on all the previous ones, which in this case is 8,000. So what do I get? 7,000 plus 8,000? That's 15,000. That's my cumulative frequency at this point. Total sales, and then I divide by my total just like I did before. Is it 60%? 60%, fantastic. Okay, so now I'm on to my Sunday column, and I'm all the way up to 60%. I'm going to put a big fat dot there. Just like our cumulative frequency polygons before, this is going to keep on getting bigger and bigger because it includes all the previous ones with it. 